Welcome to the second part of my discussion with Rick Welch about Vietnam, Iraq, and where have all the flower children gone. Well, one thing about Vietnam that I noticed that, you know, and, and, and it's not quite the same thing, is that in Vietnam, you get these 18-year-old kids, and they don't know what the heck they're doing, and they, they throw them in the jungle. And, you know, with Iraq, I think maybe there's a little bit, they're trying a, a few different things. Um, about a month ago, I was in Florida, and I ran, I just had a chance encounter with a man and his wife, and the man is a liaison. And he actually goes into the country and, and integrates with the people and the various tribes. And, and, and that is where he gets his intelligence. And I think that if you're going to resolve the problems over there, rather than bringing in these young men and women that are, you know, they get their arms and legs blown off, if you're going to resolve the problem, that's where you need to resolve it at. You need to get people that will integrate themselves into the culture and try to d deal with it on le that level. Because I, I'm wondering, the American military presence there now, what are they doing to help resolve these issues? Well, I, I can tell you what two very important initiatives that, that actually uh -huh. I was responsible for uh, in my job in Iraq. Uh, one was working with the tribes, uh, and I had a, a national tribal and religious leader outreach program that, mm -hmm. that I operated so that we could uh, identify who the real tribal leaders were and, mm -hmm. and the tribes and try to build bridges uh, mm -hmm. to those social networks, as mm -hmm. I call them, because that's the grassroots level. Now, tri Iraq is a tribal society, but they don't, I mean, some tribal leaders have more influence than other tribal right, leaders, right. and some are more influenced by religious leaders. But okay. um, So we ran a program where we liaisoned with these tribal leaders mm -hmm. to try to build those bridges and understand the culture. Mm -hmm. The second major program uh, we had was exactly what you were saying. We ran a culture, Iraqi culture training program mm -hmm. uh, and that was designed to expose all of our soldiers and mm -hmm. teach them about the Iraqi culture. Mm -hmm. Before we went to Iraq, uh, we, we went to Jordan uh, mm -hmm. and uh, trained at the Peace Operations Training Center mm -hmm. uh, outside of Amman, mm -hmm. uh, Jordan. Uh, and then uh, when we came back to Texas before we deployed to Iraq, we brought some Jordanian officers there to t train our soldiers. After we got to Iraq, I, uh, I was given the responsibility and stood up a team of Iraqis from different mm -hmm. backgrounds. All of them, uh, there were nine of them, uh, men and women, who lived under Saddam Hussein, not just Iraqi right. culture. So we, we then put on uh, just constant training uh, and refresher programs to, to train our soldiers right. about the Iraqi culture. So the, the, you think the soldiers, in, in, at least in Iraq, are a little more sensitive to the cu culture than the Vietnamese, well, American soldiers in Vietnam? Well, I think, uh, I, I mean, in one general sense, yes. Our, our leadership is much more sensitive to the fact, but it's against the backdrop of the lessons from Vietnam. Uh, our, whole, our whole American experience now is against the backdrop of what happened in Vietnam. So, so you think that the leaders are using some of the lessons of Vietnam? Well, I think they're dusting them off. I, I, I'm, not sure that, uh, I'm not sure that we, <laughs> yeah. uh, we used <laughs> them in the beginning. It. But I do think that there is a very conscious, uh, much more conscious effort by the uh, leadership to understand the Iraqi culture, a very, a very sensitive culture. Right. Uh, and, and it's really three cultures. It's a, it's an ancient tribal culture, you know, right. that dates thousands right. of years. Then you have Islamic culture on top of right. that. And then you have the country trying to modernize. And so you have all three of those conflicting uh, dynamics uh, in that culture. And so I, I do think there's much more of an effort. What do you think would happen if we just left Iraq, if the troops just pulled out? What do you think would happen? Well, I think you would see... Uh, you would see an increase in this sectarian violence, that we, we call uh -huh. it. You would see... Uh, uh, you know, Iran, frankly, uh, as we were moving into Baghdad to, right. to move uh, into Baghdad, Iran ha had already begun to infiltrate. They were, suck, you know, filling in the vacuum, uh, sending in their intelligence apparatus, their right. special forces folks, right. 
Uh, and there were a, a, a very large number of Iraqi Shia that had fled the country under Saddam. Mm -hmm. They were trained and equipped and, and mm -hmm. indoctrinated in, our, in Iran, and they came back into the country. Uh, and so uh, I think you'll see a, a larger clash between the Shia and the Sunna. And then I think some of the countries in the region that are Sunna will certainly support uh, the Sunna effort. So I think we could see a major, you know, right. if, major if we, clash. If, to um, kind of sum everything up, what do you, you know, this is kind of a simplified question, but what do you think the differences are between Vietnam and Iraq, and what do you think the similarities are, and what, if anything, is going to come out of all this? Well, I, I think some of the similarities, uh, you know, from the very point of how we got in the war, if you remember uh, uh, in the beginning of the Vietnam War, we, some say we were looking for a reason to get into that conflict. Right. Uh, and you have the incident with the Maddox. So there was great debate over h why we are going and whether the information right. was accurate. I think right. that's a similarity. And, and, and in fact, that impacts the international legitimacy and the support that we have. Uh, another similarity, I, I think, is uh, uh, our our doctrine of fighting the war. In, in the early days of Vietnam, we were truly fighting an insurgent uh -huh. war, right. yet we were applying conventional uh, right. military oh, power. Yeah. In the later years of the war, when it became a conventional war, after the, the Viet Cong had been kind of crushed, um, uh, and it became a conventional war with the North Vietnamese mm -hmm. forces, we began fighting it as an insurgent war. So, right. so we didn't always have, I think, the right doctrine at the right, right time. Right. Traditional, they were trying to fight it like World War II initially, and that's when all the body counts became so escalated during Vietnam. Well, and, and, in, and in, in Iraq, we, we hear this, uh, uh, you know, this debate about whether we should have gone in with much more overwhelming force mm -hmm. uh, and then dwindled it down more to an insurgency, uh, mm -hmm. fighting counterinsurgency as it is now. So. Uh, there are similarities there. The differences, uh, some marked differences, though, are, you know, in Vietnam we had the draft army, you right. know, oh, and, yeah, and that's that, uh, and, and, and that's that, why there hasn't been as much protest. Right. There's exactly. A, quite a lar large difference. amount of yeah. morale problems and, yeah. and issues, discipline, and just, just getting young soldiers to really understand right. why they were there right. and not get disillusioned. Uh, in Iraq, we have an all-volunteer force, right. uh, so the soldiers that are there have volunteered to not only be in the military, but many of them right. volunteered to be there. Uh, and, and, and so I think there is a difference there right. uh, with the military. Uh, another difference is we supported in Vietnam a, 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 a government that really wasn't connected to the people, mm -hmm. wasn't elected by the people, and, and, and felt detached. Uh, and here we have an elected government now. In the, in the early days of Iraq, it was an appointed government. Right. But right. now it's a, been a freely yes. elected government. That's and yet there is a similarity. I can tell you that the people do not feel connected to this government yet, even though they the elected Iraq, them, because they, they haven't delivered essential right. services right. to the people. Uh, so there's a, a, a difference and a similarity. Uh, in those terms, I think those are some key differences, key similarities uh, uh, okay. between the two. Okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And I hope everyone got something out of this. Uh, whatever your opinions are, I think that we need to speak up. I think that we need to be more involved and not let things just slide as a people. Um, to sum it up, I think that John F. Kennedy said it best when he said, every man can make a difference and every man should try. Thank you for your time.